Okay, so up here, my microphone was muted the entire time I was recording the previous iteration of this tutorial. So essentially, this tutorial is just going to be covering things that were rather obscure to me when I was like learning uh, how to make like character models like this one. Um, if you want like a modeling tutorial, I I really would just recommend like um, going to like existing videos because I I'm like kind of bad at showcasing how I model, but I can tell you about like other tips and shit. So uh, the very first first uh, thing is you probably want to turn on bloom and like this would just help soften out your model and make it look better as you're uh, making it because you can see here that it's like uh, kind of just softens the whole thing and makes it look prettier. Another thing is the color management. This is the view transform thingy. Um, by default, it is set to filmic and that will wash out all your colors. You, you don't want that uh, when you're working. Uh, so set it to standard and you get the uh, full colors. Uh, another thing is uh, add-ons. There's like four add-ons that I highly recommend. First one is Abnormal. This is a tool for adjusting the normals on a mesh. And that's really helpful for like getting uh, anime shading. Um, you can see this one isn't a great example, but um, you can see here that the face normals are like uh, designed kind of like after I guess anime or whatever. It's like more sharp, right? But you can you can really just achieve that with um abnormal. But if you if you don't have that and you don't like edit the normals, uh, your shading might look like this and it's uh pretty screwy like around here as well like you see that that's pretty bad so you want to edit your normals uh using it uh abnormal and I'll, I'll also show you how to do that real quick because that was another thing that uh, i never really had explained i just figured it out by luck uh so let's reset the vectors and clear sharp um so you can see okay first thing i want to mention is that topology of the head you can see here that it's like it's got like a loop cut or something going around uh, this edge here. We'll go into this mode to see it better. You can see it's got like this edge loop. Um, and like another one here, like these cut out things. You want to cut out the shadows essentially and then assign them to vertex groups like this one. And then you go into abnormal. Um, you want to have this thing on edit individual loop normals. I don't exactly know what that means, but uh, it's pretty crucial for the way I do it. But um, yeah, turn that on, align it to the negative Y axis or whatever is forward, and just tilt the front of the face like to the side like this. Uh, we're also gonna turn off the solidify modifier to help see it better. Um, then go to the edge of the head and pull this further back. Now you can see that it's kind of got like this uh, shading thing here. And and then just continue that with all like the vertex groups that you have made. Like you don't have to shape your head the way that I do. Just that this is essentially how you do it. Uh, for the front of the, for things more in the center of the face, you want to pull them like towards the left. You know, like this way. Uh, you might be able to hear my dog as well right now. I'm gonna go check on her after this. I gotta record this real quick. Um, and then you want to select the half of your face and then mirror it. And there you go. You got your face normals. It's really all dependent on the topology and I guess like vertex groups because you know you can use those to help get the uh, the shapes of the shading. Um, continuing on about talking about add-ons, you want to have loop tools. This is a add-on that's uh, default with Blender and it's a set of like functions or tools, actions that you can use to help with uh, I think poly modeling over. Yeah, mainly poly, poly modeling. Uh, like one of them, if you go into the specials menu and you it'll, you'll find it there. Uh, you can have like the relax thing, which uh, smooths out stuff. Uh, I have it quick favorited. That's why I'm pretty used to uh, pressing Q and then E, so that you can just like spam it and like really smooth out stuff like that. Um, another thing is uh, Node Wrangler. I think this one is also default. It's um, you know, a Node Wrangler. It wrangles nodes and you use nodes a lot for your shading uh this one's using a little bit of an outdated shader so let's go back but um the main thing about anime models is the lighting and the shading so to control that you're going to need to control the nodes so node wrangler really helps with that um 
one last add-on is UV squares. This one is like uh like off the internet, but it's also free, I'm pretty sure. It helps with um you know making your UVs into squares and it's really helpful for I'd say hair. Because if you look here and you'll see that the these little streaks are like straight, right? And then, so it really helps with like texture painting them on because uh you can just paint in a straight line. Um and if you if if you don't like make your UV square and you had them like default, it would be like this and you'd have to have a real tough time kind of like drawing on the sides and stuff rather than just straight down. Um what else? I guess I can talk about how to make hair. Um the way I do it is I use uh curves and then convert them to a mesh to uh you know I can like UV paint them. Uh, you see here it's a curve. This is like the earlier stage in the AR-15 model. Yeah, you can see it's a, a curve. And um, the way you do that is um, you add a curve here, a path curve uh, specifically, and then add another circle curve. And um, you you take that path curve, right? And you go into Geometry tab under Bevel, you select in the Object Function or Method. And you can eye drop this here Bezier circle that you just added, and you'll see that it's taking the shape of that object. So um, then you can like shape this around, and maybe scale this, scale the ends of it, and then you've got like the hair strand essentially. And you just populate the whole head with this kind of stuff. You know, just add it and shape it to your liking. And then Alt C to convert it to a mesh. Uh, um, but then you'll see it's like really really dense here. Well, let's undo a bit. Uh, the way that you can adjust that is just with the resolution. So you select the, the path. You can set it down to like two. Select the circle that's like given the shape and I'll set um, to like two or something. And now it's like uh, super low poly. Not super, but like definitely better than what we had before. Um, What else? Uh, let's talk about uh, the nodes that I mentioned earlier. Um, now... The main thing to get like an anime look is is um here. It's a diffuse going into a shader to RGB, so that way you can just plug it into a color ramp. And essentially, what that is is the diffuse BSDF is a shader that's pretty much just receiving light. You'll see here it's just light and then dark. Um, and then you take that value, or you take that like kind of mechanic, you convert it to an RGB. That way you can put it into a color ramp. And the color ramp is a representation of a value from zero to one. So it's taking like the dark and then the one and, and then the white and it's like that's zero and then one, right? And so then you can position the one and the zero like closer or further to uh from a, from each other. And by doing that, you kind of just like clamp the whole thing and just like get it super sharp looking. And with that, you use that as like a mask, a factor between mixing the the regular unlit version of your texture and a darker version of your texture. And then you use that, you use this as a mask between those two. So you'll see that's what it is. Like if we click here, and then here, you all right, let me just uh, make it like, like, I guess more apparent. So that you can it's so that you can uh, see what I'm talking about. You'll see that um let's see what what would be a good way to position this so that it's like super obvious. Um just like that. Alright. So I mean you probably get it by now, but like you see here it that's this, you know? That's the mask. And if you didn't have that, um well, I mean, you wouldn't really have any decent way to blend it, I guess. And you, I mean, you want to control the colors of this kind of stuff. So like, you kind of have to have the nodes for it, but that's more or less it. You can add like extra stuff like uh, Fresnel, which is essentially like rim lighting if you want to get fancy or uh, this tiny little specular BSDF converted into like a soft light thing, which gives a tiny bit of a tiny bit of a boost to how it looks. It's like really subtle, kind of like increases the contrast almost and gives another uh, shading layer, as you can see here. 
So you can like copy this. I don't exactly know how to describe a specular DSDF, but I mean, if you want, you can copy this. It's like free in my uh, other models too, if you want like a download. Uh, yeah, that's, um, I guess the basics of like everything. Um, I, and I guess one last tip would be to add a camera to your scene when you're modeling and uh, have that face like the front of your character and the front of their face. Because when you're working or when you're making a character, I would say like the front of the face is the most important thing. Like for anime characters, the eyes are also the most important thing, especially the eyebrows, because these will carry out like the um, the whole mood of your character, just the eyebrows themselves. Like if you slant them down like this, and like that's your default look, she'll look like kind of calm, I guess. But if you had them like a little bit upwards, they look like more active. So pay attention to the eyebrows. Like that's really important. The eyes are the window to the soul, as, as uh, they say. And uh, you know, when you're making a character, you also want to start from the head. As you'll see earlier before, um, the first stage of the Air 15 project, it was just the head and hair. Like, that's kind of what you should start off with, in my opinion, because, you know, the, the face is the most important thing. And, like, the hair, I guess, also helps uh, to visualize it. So this is, like, the first step that you want to work on. And, uh, yeah, I think that's uh, all, I have to, all I have to say right now.